adding meta game to your actual game enhances your game. And I don't mean meta like the evil company formerly known as Facebook. I mean meta like, well, the simplest form of it is achievements. Like that. Hey, I'm Pascal from Morris Pixel and welcome to another video. So in this video, I want to talk about a little bit of a meta game and how many game developers for especially smaller games seem to forget to add such features and it can enhance your game so much and it can unlock more potential for the player and hopefully actually keep them more interested in your game. So let's talk about those things after the intro. Okay, so another example uh, for this, I need you to concentrate a little bit on the display on the screen of this video, because I know a lot of you listen to this like a podcast. Right now, give me a couple of seconds on this screen. Look around this screen, uh, because I've been hiding three playing cards. See if you can find them or spot them. There are three cards hidden in the current frame that you're looking at. If I set up the camera and everything correctly, that is. and. Uh, that's about it. I, this was all the time you needed. Here are where they are. I had one here. I had one one next beside me and another one behind me. This is just a very silly example, but this is actual extra engagement in this video. And you can add these type of things to your game as well. And it just adds a little bit of extra for those that are already invested and interested in what you offered them as the core game loop. Now you can add them a little bit more so that they keep playing a little bit more and are more engaged and interested in the game. And hopefully they will actually also remember it a little bit more so that when you release your next game, well, first they will expect to have more of these type of meta thingies in the game, but they might actually also try out your game just a little bit faster because they know you're delivering more content. So let's see what we can add to games to just spice them up and it's not that difficult. So what meta game in this context means is you have your core game loop. That's the function that the player has to do to, in order to complete it or to win or whatever. The core game loop, the main functionality, the stuff you really need to go through to reach the end. Now, achievement was one of those extra little things that you can add to your game, which is actually a meta game. It will give the option to players to really try certain things to unlock those achievements. They will have to usually have to either accomplish something big in your game. It could just be defeat the end boss, but most players that will get that far will get the achievement. But you can also add achievements to your game that require the player to just do a little bit more or a little bit outside the line of the core gameplay. Now the fun thing about metagame is I personally I really never design them from the start. I usually tack them on later. So it's not something you have to think about before you start your game but once your game is has the core game loop up and running and you start adding content and variations on the core mechanics like different weapons to your shooter game or different puzzle mechanics to your puzzle game at that point, you can also start coming up with things that the player could do for even more enhancement. So I'm working on Gauntlet of Power and Regulator City, two different games. One is a shooter, the other is a dungeon crawler, roguelike. Um, and I've been adding meta game to both these games. So let's talk about some of the things I've been adding. And maybe it will inspire you or other game developers also to add interesting features to the game because honestly, it just gives so much more playability and replayability and value to add to your game and for the player. It's very much worth it because it's often just a couple of days here and there to add these things to your game if you're smart about it. So after achievements, this is probably the easiest thing to add to your game. If you have multiple playable characters, you're usually um, implementing them in your game and then you're tweaking them so they play a little different. Once that's done, lock them. Make sure the player cannot select those players unless they do something to unlock them. Very simple example, but this is one of those features that can be seen as meta. So for example, in God of Power, I give you two characters and I have two characters locked. To unlock them, you need to find and collect tokens. Every locked character needs four tokens. These tokens, I've been hiding them in certain events. Now, this was a little bit difficult because Gauntlet of Power is a procedurally generated dungeon. Every dungeon is different. I have no idea how the dungeon is being formed and what the end result is. So I needed to come up with things that can be done to unlock them. For example, to unlock one of the warrior tokens, I know you have to actually uh, carry an ax with you and you have to find, I think either the treasure room or a secret room in dungeon number four. And I'm probably gonna be forcing a treasure room or secret room in that dungeon just to make sure it's there. 
but the player will have to be able to uh, get an axe to level three then enter a secret room and then you'll get one of the tokens and that's just one out of four and that's how I've been hiding the tokens for all these characters and it's just a very simple example of metagame and I've been doing that to a regulated city as well uh, you have five characters but only two are playable but in this case um, you actually um, have to find the clothing for each of the character which I think is 10 pieces of clothing left sock right sock all that stuff um, shirt trousers cap whatever uh, ID card and um, you're getting those clothing pieces by finding a janitor and a janitor is hidden in every mission in every building you enter the game will just actually hide it somewhere and it will be uh, calling out for help if you actually find the janitor rescue the janitor he will give you a piece of clothing that means you're closer to unlocking a new character which then plays completely different and enhances the game again and actually expands the game because now you have a different character who has different abilities and skills and that makes it interesting hopefully for the player to keep playing and another feature I've added to both of the games is actually based on I've been mentioning this a couple of times also on the discord I've been playing a lot of the Lego games together with my wife um, we're now in Lego City under undercover yeah no yeah I think undercover um, but the thing is they have these uh, red bricks in the game and that's pretty much a cheat for your game so if you find a red brick you can actually unlock a cheat code and I found that very interesting because uh, obviously we don't want people to cheat but I also want people to be able to complete my game so having uh, these options in the game means that a player that doesn't make it to the end of the game can perhaps just um, activate a couple of cheats with iron cheat because I'm providing them but then they can manage to get further and further like more ammo in your gun or for the dungeon crawler um, more loot or uh, prices are half for all the items stuff like that and I've been hiding those type of things in both of these games so in regulated city I've been hiding golden wrenches which will allow you to tweak the game settings um, and one of those is like hidden at the end of the street and most players won't actually go there but there suddenly be some crates that hopefully inspire the player to think why are there crates on the street I'm gonna investigate that and they'll get a golden wrench one out of eight or nine of those and in gauntlet of power I've added runes which are magical runes and you can find those also based on uh, various things by maybe reaching uh, dungeon six and then you will get one from the janitor because the janitor is going to be popping up in all my games uh, or maybe you have to um, upgrade all your weapons and to the max and then you get a certain rune things like that again a lot of unlockable stuff that adds more variation to the game and then adds more options to the player and regular city i also added um, a weapon every mission hides a weapon and in regular city the levels are designed so i designed hiding spots eventually a player will hopefully know where all these spots are based on the mission they're playing or the building they're playing the mission in so they can find these weapons and unlocking a weapon means you get it permanently for the rest of the game and you'll be able to um, use it in your hub and i've also been hiding three uh, dna kits in every mission you can find three or need to collect three you don't have to but if you collect them you can enhance yourself as a player back in the hub again so there are extra things that are uh, built on top of the missions you don't need to do them to complete the mission you can complete the mission move on to the next and the next and that's all playable and hopefully balanced correctly but if you want a little edge or a little advantage to your gameplay then you have to find these extra things that I've been hiding and personally I think that enhances the gameplay a lot more there's more to do more to find more to um, unlock and um, actually makes you feel smart if you actually uncover something or find something or collect them all and of course I'll add another achievement if you collect all the stuff that you can unlock as meta so there's meta on top of meta I know and how I usually come up with these things is pretty much uh, I play test my game daily when I'm changing stuff I'll test it again and right now I'm really enjoying my own games which means I'm actually play testing testing them at night or in the weekends when I'm not working on them so um, when I'm playing I'll just come up with ideas it would be cool if I could do this or maybe if this happens and then we can do that and those things usually translate great to meta games it's you're playing the core game loop of your own game and coming up with rules outside of that or or options or ideas that fit the game but are not part of the core game loop 
those things are great for meta. So um, my suggestion, play your own game. First of all, if you're not enjoying it, there's something wrong with your game. Trust me, I've been through that phase as well. Uh, but if you are enjoying your game, see what you can come up with while playing that you're missing, that you could really use to your advantage as a player. And try to implement that as metagame. And um, let me know other ideas for metagames in the comments below, because we're ending the video here. I think that's all I had to say about metagames. So um, we're done. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below, hop on the Discord, and I'll see you next week. Bye.